So let's talk about multiplayer games, because generally these days, most online multiplayer games kind of have a pattern with how they come out and how they get supported over time. Most multiplayer games come out and they have barely any content at all in them. They come out very, very bereft of content, very, very light, and people just complain endlessly that there's nothing to do until updates eventually come and add more to the game over time. And so people come back anytime there's big new updates to check out the new stuff, and this is kind of how multiplayer games have been going for the past several years. Not exactly my favorite model for how to run a multiplayer online game, but it's how it is, so what you gonna do? But uh, in addition to this structure for how multiplayer games are run these days, something very strange that I've noticed is also a pattern in how players respond to these kinds of games. Because I've noticed a sentiment that I've seen multiple times across multiple different genres and different types of games, which is essentially that once a multiplayer game stops getting its updates, once the support for it is done and there's no more that's going to be added to the game, the game is quote-unquote dead. And I find this to be an extremely bizarre way to think of a game. To a degree, I can understand it, because people want to be playing whatever's new and interesting and exciting, and if there's new updates for a currently active game, then hey, that's something to go check out. Whatever it is is probably cool or something. It gives you a motivation to come back to the game and see what's going on. And so that helps keep the player base alive, and it gives people reasons to repeatedly come back and keep playing the game over a large period of time. So I understand to a degree where this mentality comes from, but personally, I really think that people that think of games like this are really missing out. And I started to get on this line of thought when I was realizing what my experience with this game here, Gears 5, was like. Because I picked up Gears 5 when it first came out at launch, and when it first came out, it, like most online games these days, didn't have a whole lot of content in it, didn't have a whole lot going on, and it also had a lot of issues and a lot of problems. I still liked the game quite a bit, and I played it for like a good month, I would say, when it first came out. But then I kind of got my fill of Gears, I was like, alright, I'm good, and I went on to go play other stuff. And I saw that the game was getting its updates, adding new content and new stuff and fixing things and patching issues and all kinds of shit like that, but it never really enticed me too much to check these things out. I didn't really pay that much attention to what was going on, what was being added, and what was being fixed. I just saw that the game was getting support, and I was like, yeah, that's cool. Whenever I get back into Gears, uh, you know, I'll check it out. Cut forward to, like, two years after the game's release, and the final update for the game came out. To most people, the final update is the nail in the coffin for an online game. You know, it comes out, you play it for a bit, and then, all right, that's it. Game's done. Put it away. But to me, it was kind of the polar opposite. When I heard that it was the final update for Gears 5, I was like, oh, so the game's, like, done now. Okay, I'm gonna go back to Gears 5 and check it out now that the game has everything it's gonna have in it. And what I found was a dramatically improved Gears 5. A lot of the gameplay issues were smoothed over. I think the balance of Gears 5 is in a much, much better place than when the game first came out. There was tons of content. There was now, like, over 30 maps. They added a whole bunch of extra classes you could play as in the co-op modes. They fixed the shitty microtransaction store to be less shitty and something that you can actually use and enjoy without having to spend any money on it if you don't want to. Not only that, but there were new weapons, new enemy types added into the co-op modes, there was a whole extra campaign DLC that I could play. There was just so much stuff now in Gears 5, and the game was just better in every single way, and coming back to it, I had a ton of fun. I had a blast playing Gears 5 after the game was quote-unquote dead. I put way more hours into Gears 5 after it was done than I did when it first came out, by far. And that's because the version of the game that I've been playing is way, way better. Had I been playing Gears 5 over the course of those two years as the updates were coming out, then I would have probably spent a lot more hours in the game 
but those hours probably would not have been nearly as enjoyable because I would be playing inferior versions of the game that would only get incrementally better over a very long period of time. And in that time, especially if a game has problems, then you're going to end up feeling burnt out on the game eventually if you just keep playing and playing and playing it. So you end up getting your fill of the game early on in its life when it still has a lot of growing and improving to do, and then by the time those updates come around, Around, you probably don't even really care that much anymore because you're sick of the game. Yeah, I didn't play Gears 5 for two years and I could have been playing it that entire time, but the Gears 5 that I've been playing recently has been super duper fun and it is easily a game I can see myself playing for the next several years and continuing to have a ton of fun with it. Whereas if I played it over the course of those two years, I don't think I would be as jazzed to go back to Gears 5 right now. Another example that happened to me last year was I played Star Wars Battlefront 2, and I didn't even play that game when it first came out, because, you know, that game when it first came out was like a horrible disaster. And so after seeing all the bad stuff about it, I was like, I'm not even going to play that game. But then over time, I had been hearing from people that do like it that actually they improve things and fix things up a lot. And so I saw it on sale for 20 bucks. It was the Celebration Edition. I was like, yeah, let me give it a shot. And it was a great time. It was super fun. This was long after the game had stopped getting support, and it had tons of maps, tons of characters, lots of customizability for your loadouts and stuff. And because I got the Celebration Edition, all of the cosmetic stuff in the game was just unlocked, so I didn't even have to deal with any shitty microtransaction garbage. I know for some people it can feel like if there's not a battle pass to work through or there's not new updates keeping the game alive or whatever, then it's like, what's the point of playing these types of games? But, I mean, I feel like that's a very new sentiment that you see from, like, younger people who have recently gotten into games because, I mean, back in the day, games didn't have any of this shit. They were just games that existed and you played them because they were fun, and I can still very much do that with multiplayer games. What was motivating me to play all these matches of Gears 5? Nothing beyond the fact that I thought the game was really fun. And I just wanted to highlight this kind of experience because I don't really see a lot of people talking about this kind of thing when they play online multiplayer games. I always see people complaining online of like, oh, they're not adding any content, there's nothing to do in the game, this sucks. And it's like, if you're having this many problems, just stop playing the game. There's plenty of other stuff out there that you can play to keep yourself occupied while that game gets cleaned up. Obviously, in a more ideal situation, games would launch in better states where they have a lot of content and not that many issues, but this is the reality we live in, and so you gotta make the most of the situation you have, and for me, that is to just play a game whenever I feel like it, whether that be when it first comes out or after the game has already had all of its updates, and not just playing whatever is the new thing that's going on. In fact, in recent times, I've started to feel the polar opposite, where I almost don't really care that much to pick up online games when they're brand new, because I know that if I just wait a year, two years, however long, then there will be a much better game that I'll start playing, and it'll probably be cheaper anyway. I've said before that I'm a big advocate for playing the best version of a game possible, and when you think about it, picking up a game new is really the worst experience you can possibly give yourself, because you're playing the game essentially while it's still in development, because let's be honest, a lot of these online games aren't even really finished when they first come out. I don't really like to play games in betas either for that exact same reason, or early access games, because then I'll play a whole bunch of the game before it's even out, and then when it does come out, it's like, well, I already played that game, so I don't really care that much anymore. So nowadays, I'm kind of feeling like if I'm gonna play a game at all, I might as well wait for it to become, like, really, really good, or wait all the way to the end when it stops being updated to play the best version of it possible. And this isn't something that only applies to multiplayer games. I find a single-player genre that definitely gets this as well is roguelikes, like Dead Cells. That's a game that looks super duper cool. I played it for like one hour just to try it and see if I would like it, and I thought it was insanely fun. And I'm like, holy shit, I gotta play this game. Haven't played it yet, and I don't really have any plans to play it anytime soon because they're still adding stuff to it. Imagine what my Dead Cells experience is going to be like when I finally do pick up the game after all this extra cool shit has been added to it. That game's going to be fucking sick. 
and I'm plenty happy just playing other stuff in the meantime. The only real problem that comes from this is that a lot of times after a game stops getting support, the player base will drop quite a bit, and depending on the game, it might start to become difficult to find matches, which does suck and it is unfortunate, but to begin with, that problem only exists because so many people abandon a game once it stops getting support because they label it as dead. And I find it unfortunate that so many people play games like this because they're robbing themselves of a really great experience at the end of a game's life. Just because a game is no longer getting updates does not mean that it suddenly stops being fun. And in my opinion, if a game is fun, why stop playing it?